the one who was leading white species was like a feeder master level he was really well prepared for my french defense and i'm gonna just skip over this thing because i already covered uh basics behind the french defense the d4 pawn is gonna be the one of the main targets for black that's why we had this knight g7 it wants to come to f5 and put more pressure on the d4 we have bishop d3 this is a typical best square for the light square bishop of white and here takes takes and then knight f5 white takes and we get the pawn on f5 which is a little bit damaged pawn structure but we'll be also happy with the pawn for a certain reason we'll discuss it really quickly after we have also an isolated pawn on d5 but this pawn is not going to be a weakness because we can put a bishop on e6 that's a bad bishop that we have typically and it makes some people happier like you know having this bishop a little bit more advanced it's going to be defending successfully the pawn on d5 so there is maybe some kind of harmony in black's position why this pawn is on f5 well the pawn on f5 is inviting the neighbor pawn to join it on the fifth rank that's a hidden idea here that people often overlook you may spot it in some other openings that's what is happening often and you may be guessing that there will be some kingside attack for black, which is quite strange for the French defense. That's a surprising moment that many players as white fall for. They just completely ignore this possibility of black pushing the G pawn. That's never happening actually in the French defense, almost never, unless the pawn is on F5. When the pawn is on E6, like for example, before this, imagining G5 would be just suicidal, that's ridiculous. But after this, it may work okay we'll be discussing that later but first why not knight f5 without taking on d4 well the difference is there that in case of knight f5 immediately and bishop takes f5 e takes f white can take on c5 eventually and you see the pawn again it's an isolated pawn as well as before but this time there is this open file you see for the queen and some rook maybe coming to d file and overall the center is being open a little bit more so this time probably we shouldn't really go for g5 there is no way actually i would do that therefore we had c takes the c takes the first knight f5 bishop takes f5 e takes f and then knight c3 so this is how this should be done and then after bishop e6 they would just castle which is already an inaccuracy you should actually start thinking in a long term what's going to be the thing that black wants to do as we said there is this f5 pawn wants the g pawn to join it so maybe white should secure it that never happens and therefore, the H pawn should go to the fourth rank this way. That's what my opponent did. That's the best move in the given position according to theory. And I knew that. But what I didn't know is what should I do after that? So because no one would be going for this line. Almost no one would know how to play this for white. I just assumed that here, what I should do is just develop. And eventually, maybe if they would castle at some point, I would renew the idea of G5. But I would not castle. What the white should do is King F1, G3, King G2. The rook stays on the h-file for the sake of not allowing g5. Let me ask you this, like, what would you do as black here? And you'll see if it's the right way or a mistake that I made in the game. Okay, so what I did is bishop e7. Without asking myself what my opponent is going to be doing next. What is wrong with bishop e7? What is that thing that white can exploit now and create permanent weaknesses in black's camp? Okay, so you can try to find it. If you don't have a clue what's going to be the thing to do, it's going to be related with the complex of weak squares that white's going to be able to exploit after that move okay i'm going to move on if you want you can pause and try to find a move for yourself it's bishop to g5 this move needed to be prevented with the h6 before again a very odd looking move in the opening phase you don't have your king castle you cannot castle you should develop your dark square bishop but you see before that take care of the strategic issues in the given position which is to respond to the opponent's last move which h4 h4 is done for a certain reason and the point is you cannot just normally develop so i'm going to put my bishop on g5 and exchange the dark square bishops and once those bishops are being off the board and look at this d6 square the knight is going to be trying to get there as we'll see in the game we had queen b6 with the intention possibly to go back with the bishop chase the bishop of white back into their camp and then develop again well that all effort is not going to work in case white just exchanges the bishop it's maybe odd looking, but the king is safe if the center stays closed. So I, I didn't want to move my knight backwards. My only chance here is going to be to go through the queen side. And the king is not in danger yet, at least. Queen d2, a very good move defending on one side the pawn on b2. And the other side is going to be threatening to go to g5, which is going to force the king back to the f8 square, closing the activity of this rook from h8. So what we need to do is h6, white castled, although you may always consider getting the rook to the h3. In this case, maybe it doesn't work because of f4. Not here, but at some point. 
rook a c8. Probably today I would go with the rook h to c8 because we should be playing on the queen side. So why would we keep the king side rook? Plus, if you'd be moving the h rook, you can hide your king on f8. This way the king needs to stay where it is until the rook from h8 moves away. Rook fc1. White is going all in on the queen side, which is not illogical here. It's maybe not typical for white, but since the black's king is in the center, you clear this queen side, basically will be able to infiltrate along the seventh rank and start attacking black's king. a6 done because of this possibility of knight b5, knight d6 in case the queen of black moves away. And then b4. This is extremely good move. First of all, there is this some kind of things like knight a4, knight c5. There is also this a4, b5, and after a takes b, and the knight can come to b5, and finally to d6. And we cannot take on b4, because there is a little trick. And you can pause the video and try to find it, but I'm going to continue now. It's rook a, b1, the point is a3 is the threat, of course. And if we'd like to prevent it by playing queen a5, there is this beautiful rook sacrifice, because there is knight e5. So little tactics here, serving really well the positional goal with b4, which is to open the queen side or get the knight to b5 and d6 or knight to the c5 square. I need to say that in case the queen before we get like just rook a to b1 and after that, the rook is coming to the seventh rank. We shouldn't really discuss that. Rook hd8 done by black, rook a b1. Knight b8 preemptively going with the knight backwards because b5 is coming. And now rook c4. Possibly the idea is to prevent knight a4, but also maybe to double the rooks on the c file and exert some pressure there. But uh, we had b takes a6 and queen took and knight b5. The knight is actually saying, I'm going to come to d6. Rook took on c1. If you would not take on c1, then you would get rook takes, rook takes, knight e6 or knight e6 immediately. And afterwards d5 may happen. So rook takes c1, queen took on c1. Now the queen is threatening to infiltrate here or here. Therefore knight e7. Knight c7. This is actually a surprising moment. I think I, I was expecting knight e6. But okay, knight c7 is putting pressure on the queen. The queen moves back to a7. Because if she would take on a2, then rook takes b7. Queen to a7 and then a4. It's not that you are offering the pawn that much as securing a3 square for the queen to attack the king of black suddenly from here. That's going to be something that we can prevent only by taking on a4. So allowing the rook to come to b7. But you see, why decided first to take on e6? You never do this kind of things. You don't take a big pawn unless there is something good to follow up with. Trying to get a queen to d6, putting pressure on e6 and d7 at the same time, and that would be game over. The only way for black is to cover the d6 square by having, well, the queen somewhere controlling it. We had queen a6, but it doesn't really stop queen c7. The queen on c7 is paralyzing actually everything. The queen cannot really run away because... The d6 is going to be available for the white's queen. The king cannot really step away except for maybe on e8. The rook cannot move because of the knight on d7. So everything is basically paralyzed. Queen a4 done first. Well, you need to move something. Queen d6 check. King goes to f7. And you may think that maybe black is liberating a little bit, but not. This king needs to stay there defending the pawn. Uh, the knight needs to be now defended by the queen and the rook. So basically nothing can move. So if black can only worsen their position, what is there for white to do? That's a simple question, isn't it? Just wait. And how are you going to wait here? Well, you have two ways, I think, or maybe more, but what I see here is h5, paralyzing these pawns. Well, you cannot play h5, you get knight g5 in. You can play g6 indeed, but what do you do after? We had king h2 instead, and I played f4. I mean, what else is there? g6, but that's it. White could just play h5 or king h3. Or... But he played rook c7, allowing me to go with the queen to b5. But then rook a7, I cannot go back to a4. The rook moves, again, the knight falls, the king moves, the pawn on e6 collapses. What I did here is just resigning in another way, playing g5 and after h g, h g, knight g5, king g6, queen e6, I think, check. King took on g5, queen e7, king f5, and queen d8. Completely one-sided game from the start, but what is there to blame? This Zucz one thing, king h2 was there. Tactical moment with b4 as well, but the strategic zenith was here. Bishop e7 and bishop g5. Allowing this means that the dark squares, complex of squares, is surrendered. You can learn a lot from really asking this question, what my opponent's last move means, what that move is intending to do, and what it supports for my opponent to do next. I learned a lot from this. I hope that you actually can learn a lot as well. And that's basically it for this video.